cat block. This is uh, between our center and our backside tackle on the backside of power. The tackle has to be responsible for the B gap to the C gap. So he has to be athletic, especially when he has a B gap defender, which is a three technique in his backside B gap. So we do this drill uh, over and over and over again. That's a long block for the center to get back. So we want to make sure we secure the B gap by the backside tackle first and foremost. And once he secures the backside B gap, all right, he has to flip his hips to get to the C gap and turn it into a drop block. So the center has the backside A gap. The backside tackle has the backside B to C gap. So again, we get reps of these in practice. So in turn, we can have great reps in the game. Again, outstanding job by this young man closing the cushion there, making sure the B gap is secure, then get to the C gap defender. Pow. Uh, we believe in this play here at Southern University. Um, uh, our young men have really bought into this play and the way we teach it, our teaching progressions, um, uh, keep our young men super, super excited about running this play. All right. First thing you must understand about power and gap scheme in general is everybody's responsible for a gap. So the way we teach it here at Southern University, this play side tackle here, say we're running power to the right. This play side tackle is technically responsible for this inside B gap. This play side guard here is responsible for his inside A gap. The center is responsible for his backside A gap. Guard, he's going to be the puller, so he's going to be involved in the pull, in the wall up. Backside top, his responsibility is the backside B gap to eventually the backside C gap. So he's got to be athletic to be able to be responsible for two gaps. Our tight end here or our fullback is going to be responsible for the C gap. Now. How we get to that is very, very important. Again, we teach this play as a double team kick out wall up type mentality. So somewhere on this play, we're going to get a double team. Somewhere on this play, we're going to get a kick out. Somewhere on this play, we're going to get a wall up. So we really, really believe in emphasizing doing drills to get us to that point. Now, let's first of all talk about the double team. We have to understand, we use what we call a lateral lead step lateral lead step all right this is our postman all right we always hear at southern university talk about a postman and a delivery man all right our gallop step which is our offensive lineman that's responsible to getting cheek to cheek with the adjacent offensive lineman uh in order to get the movement we want so we can be cheek to cheek so we don't get split on the double team we refer to this young man as the delivery man so we want to have a postman and a delivery man. All right, very, very important. Now, when we talk about postman and delivery man, all right, he's responsible, the play side guard's responsible for first, he takes a lateral step first. So he's going to lateral on the A gap, then lead back to the, through the defender's crotch. All right, he's going to lateral, then lead back to the defender's crotch. Now, he's the cover guy, all right? The, the play side tackle is going to take what we call a gallop step. When he's going to get cheek to cheek. He takes one, two, three, four, five to get five steps, and they want to double team to the backside linebacker. We want to emphasize getting vertical push at the point of attack to the backside linebacker. Now, we teach for the inside adjacent offensive lineman. We want to teach that we want to have a double team, and we want to move the down guy. But we want to have always four eyes on the backside linebacker. Meaning, inside guys, two eyes. Outside guys, two eyes. We want to have four eyes on the linebacker. We can feel the defensive lineman on our lateral lead and our gallop step. But we want to see the backside linebacker for a possible run through. Now, when you're talking about the kick out. We want to make sure that we get a kick out. In the ideal world, most defensive linemen or defensive ends are taught, in this case, to spill the down block. So we want to try, in the ideal world, if we can, to get a kick out and build a wall on this defense. We want to try to get a kick out and build a wall on the defense. Now, with that being said, if we get a spill, all right, and we can't get the kick out, we will log this defensive end. Now, let's talk about the center. He's responsible for the backside. A gap. So he's going to take what we call a down block. 
His job is to get his hat on the hip of the defender so the defender can't come back over the top. But he's going to make sure he doesn't step under himself and lose ground. All right, let's talk about our backside tackle before we get to our skip pulling guard. He's responsible to protect the B gap first for any run through, all right, on the, on the backside because, again, he can't, the front side double team can't see the backside run through on the backside B gap. So he's responsible for the backside B gap to the backside C gap, and we call that our cat block. So, again, that means center and tackle. Now, the biggest thing, again, we want to get a double team kick out. Now, let's talk about the wall up. We teach here at Southern University what we call a skip pull. A skip pull uh, makes us keep our shoulders square. So we're going to take a skip pull. We're going to cross over on our first skip. All right, we're going to cross over to keep our shoulders square. Our objective is to come tight as possible and trim the fat and come tight as possible off of the double team. We want to come off the double team until the second level defender. Now, another reason why we skip pull so we can keep our shoulders square to the line of scrimmage because also if we get a spill by this defensive end and we end up logging this defensive end, he's going to have to have his shoulders square to be able to steal. Be able to, he might not be able to get through the B gap. He might have to in turn get through the C gap to still get that second level defender. This is how we run power as far as the front is concerned with the uh, offensive line here at Southern University. Now let's talk about the backfield action. We teach our quarterback to reverse out. All right, the reason why we want to ver reverse out because we want to just hold that those linebackers for a split second. All right, we want to hold them for a split second just to allow our linemen to be able to get on their blocks. Now, as our quarterback reverses out, he reverses out uh, and he's going to come back back on the midline. He's going to reverse out back down the midline. Our tailback is going to take a drop step. Now, we run our power play starting in the A gap to a possible expansion. It can hit B, it can hit C. So our tailback is going to take a drop step and he's going to press the A gap first. Now, as he presses the A gap when the quarterback reverses out and gives him back down the midline, he wants the quarterback wants to make sure that he does not take the back away from the midline because the back wants the A gap first. If we can get the A gap, we're going to ram it up in there. Now, our back, we teach him on the on the on the on the uh, on his aiming point. As he presses the A gap, he wants to get on the hip of his puller. So if he's out, if he's able to get a crease to hit it up in the A gap, we'll take it there. But if the A gap's closed, he has the liberty to be able to go B and possible C gap. Again, we want to run this back play A to B to possible C. This is how we run sub, uh, power the power play here at Southern University. Tell you what, this drill here puts the whole play into perspective. On this drill, which is the power drill, you get the deuce, you get the back block, you get the skip pull, and you get the wall up, all in one drill. So we get a lot of reps of this. Uh, and right here, you see our guard, we want to trim the fat. So he's leaving too much space and too much air right there in between the double team and his pull. All right, we have a, a game rep right here, great down block. Uh, taking a drill, power drill to the field. So we get a great down block uh, by the center, great catch step by the backside tackle, great skip pull uh, by the backside guard, kick out, wall up. Now we got a big time play. Gap scheme. Again, man, we, we really believe in running power here at Southern University. And, you know, it's very important that we get. Uh, movement at the point of attack. We want to create a kick out by our fullback or tight end. We want to create great movement on our double team. We want to create a great down block by our center. We want to create a great cat step by our backside tackle and an outstanding skip pull by our guard. Outstanding tight pull by our guard. Great running lane for the back to run through. And this is what we're looking for. Get our backs to the safeties and we've done our 1-11. All right, you'll see this versus three down. We have some mug linebackers here. So we have both backers this in 20 techniques over the guards mugged up in the gap. Now, being that this is a gap scheme, everybody's responsible for a gap. So in this case right here, everyone will down block at the point of attack. So again, we'll still get, uh, instead of getting double teams, we'll get all down blocks is what we really want. All right, we still get a tight skip pull. Now we're off to the...